the down sign. Is this the real sign or the joke sign? Schitt's Creek won big at the Emmys, and that is in part down to the amazing work and meticulous detail that goes into making the show. It made you laugh, it made you cry, and it made you cry with laughter. Schitt's Creek is one of the best sitcoms in modern times, and is the best Canadian export since Ryan Gosling. Boy, do we love ourselves some baby goose. The show's popularity has risen with each passing season, and in its sixth and final outing swept up at the Emmys, with all four of its main cast picking up a trophy. And with good reason. Schitt's Creek is filled with small details and funny anecdotes that are nearly as endearing as the show itself, with the final season in particular hosting a number of Easter eggs. In this video, we will take a look at 25 or more things you may have missed or possibly didn't know about the coveted show. From behind the scenes stories, callbacks to earlier seasons, to amazing improv from the cast, get your handkerchiefs ready, if anyone still even owns a handkerchief, and get ready to cry like a bebe all over again as we paddle down Schitt's Creek. So you probably know that David actor Dan Levy is the son of the show's patriarch Eugene Levy, but you may not know that he is also the co-creator, showrunner, and one of the lead writers on the show. In fact, he initially pitched his show to his father because he was struggling to get work as an actor, going by the field of dreams maxim, if you build it, they will come. But he's not Eugene's only child to feature on the show, with the local waitress Twyla being played by Eugene's daughter Sarah Levy. It's all in the family after all. Apparently the rest of the cast would watch Eugene watching his children, loving how proud he looked when seeing them perform. Now that is some wholesome content right there. While Annie Murphy is known for her role as Alexis, she nearly had a different role in the show, that of Stevie. Initially, Abby Elliott was cast as the role of Alexis, so Murphy was brought in to audition for the role of Stevie. Murphy said she had fun auditioning for both roles, but as soon as she saw Emily Hampshire audition for the part of Stevie, she knew that she was the perfect match for the role. Eventually, Elliot dropped out of the show due to scheduling conflicts, allowing Murphy to take up the role of Alexis. Although Eugene Levy still needed some convincing, however, as Murphy is a natural brunette while Alexis is blonde. So Dan Levy had to cut out blonde hair on paper and attach it to Murphy's picture so Eugene could finally see it. It's hard to imagine anyone other than Catherine O'Hara playing the role of the eccentric matriarch Moira Rose, but in the early stages, Dan Levy didn't have her in mind. It was actually Eugene who pitched Catherine for the part, with the two having a long history together spanning decades, with the two performing together as part of the Second City Improv troupe back in the 70s. Dan knew quickly that when someone throws you a bone, you run with it, and definitely didn't resist Catherine taking on the part. You and I to potent grapes. Like Philadelphia, it seems to always be sunny in Schitt's Creek. That's because the external scenes are shot in Goodwood, Ontario, which can get pretty cold in the wintertime. So despite Schitt's Creek meaning to look like a hellhole, it actually looks rather lovely with the warm weather and bright foliage. Interior shots, however, are shot in Pinewood Studios in Toronto. You may think Dan Levy would love to write for his own character David, but apparently his favorite character to write for is actually Alexis. That's because the wild stories and celebrity encounters apparently came natural to Dan. Boy, he must live an interesting life. And while he loves the character of Moira, he did have some trepidation writing for the character due to her unusual action and idiolect. Speaking of Moira's accent, no one knew exactly how it would sound until they shot the very first scene, and her pronunciation for the word baby, or should I say bebe, actually happened on the spot. It was initially a mistake, but the crew loved it so much that that was that. The accent itself was reportedly based on people O'Hara knew, although she refused to say who exactly. Apparently, her interesting use of old or outdated words was also the creation of the actor herself and her makeup artist. Apparently, her makeup artist gave her foils filavery, a treasure of unusual words, and O'Hara would often rewrite her own dialogue so she could insert words from the book into the script, such as the word pettifogging, which is a brilliant word. I want that to make a comeback. The main premise of the show was actually inspired by Kim Basinger. Basinger reportedly bought a town in Georgia for 20 million US dollars in an effort to increase tourism, but apparently the town quickly went into decline with a lot of businesses closing up, leaving Basinger to sell the town for 1 million US dollars, an overall loss of 19 million. Dan decided to put a positive spin on this in the show, with the town being the thing that actually saves the Rose family and the thing that they embrace. Also, the uh, crude title of the town, Schitt's Creek, was reportedly created by Eugene while having a boozy conversation with his friends. 
But it's not just the name of the town that's crude, with the welcome sign for the town looking rather, uh, shall we say, inappropriate. Johnny is desperate to change the sign, and he finally gets his wish in the final episode as they make a callback to the sign with Roland giving an updated sign to the roses as a final gift. While the style hasn't changed, the inclusion of the roses shows just how much they meant to the town and that they will forever be associated with Schitt's Creek. You uh, probably noticed that Moira wears a lot of wigs. Like, a lot of wigs. It was actually O'Hara herself who pitched this, with the character wearing a huge amount of different styles on her head. Just in case you were wondering, her favorite wig is actually the pink one, which I have to say is a mighty fine choice. You also may have noticed that the white wig she wears in Season 6 Episode 1 is actually on backwards. Well, that's because O'Hara said if she wore it the right way, she would have looked like Sia. Hey, what's wrong with that? Also, apparently it's not just us that loves Moira's wigs, with Dan Levy and Annie Murphy often drooling over them. Part of Moira's fashion was inspired by Catherine O'Hara's own style, who also wears black and white when traveling and likes the monochromatic style. But the main inspiration for the look was originally inspired by socialite and fashion designer Daphne Guinness. Although apparently the look has rubbed off on O'Hara, with her noticing that she now tends to go with the Moira look. Life imitates art, after all. One of the hardest scenes to film, according to O'Hara, was the bronzer scene, and that is because everyone just couldn't stop laughing. In the scene, we see Moira and David trying to sell some of the Ali Vu makeup, while David has bronzer caked all over his face. The cast and crew apparently found the whole thing very funny, and you can see them doing their very best not to crack up and ruin David's perfect bronzer. Eugene's least favorite scene, however, was one of the very first ones to be seen, and that is the now infamous drip scene. As the Rose family move into the town of Schitt's Creek, they are lying in bed when a mysterious liquid drips onto Johnny's head, causing him to go into a frenzy. That's because Eugene apparently takes one thing very, very seriously. His hair. Apparently, Eugene loves his hair so much that he hated having anything ruin it, and this scene was basically written by his son just to prank him. Let's face it, who wouldn't prank their dad if they had the opportunity? Might want to rethink the nightgown first. There's a whole Ebenezer Scrooge oh. thing. Eugene may have hated the drip scene, but the scene he did like was his one with the Jazza girls, as he got to do something he loves doing, crooning, as well as perform with the epic Jazza girls. I can't wait to see them on tour. Eugene's favorite episode, though, was the one where Patrick comes out to his parents, because let's face it, it made everyone cry like a bebe. Last time I say bebe again, I promise. Alternatively, Annie Murphy's favorite episode is the one where Moira surprises Alexis at their graduation, again making us all cry like babies. Darn, I can't stop! Lovable vet and Alexis's beau Ted, played by Dustin Milligan, certainly is endearing to us all. The actor apparently first met Dan Levy auditioning for a role that neither of them got. And while he undoubtedly looks good on a motorcycle, unfortunately it's not him that rides it, with a stunt double being used to actually go off and ride it. But Ted is most known for his puns. That's because the actor loves puns in real life and would just keep putting puns into his dialogue and was actually shocked that Dan let him get away with it. Well, I guess it was worth a punt, eh? Speaking of actors inserting words into the dialogue, one of the funniest pronunciations in the show, other than the word bebe, sorry, is the way that Alexis says the word David. That's because Annie Murphy put a lot of work to get the tone just right, and when she found the perfect inflection on the word, she decided to put it into the script as much as possible. Hence why Alexis often uses the word David as punctuation. David? No, see, it doesn't work when I do it. David, I have nowhere else to put stuff. In preparation for the part of Alexis, Annie Murphy watched a ton of reality TV so she could get into the character with the primary inspiration for acting style taking after the Kardashians and Paris Hilton. In fact, Alexis's main physical trait, the hand flip, was taken from the Kardashians directly. But apparently it rubbed off a little too much with Murphy, who would constantly remain in character while at home due to how much reality TV she was watching, much to the annoyance of her husband. To be fair, I'm pretty impressionable myself. Every time I watch The Boys, I keep imitating Butcher and wear a trench coat and call people a- Did you just call God a C-word? Yeah. Having Stevie be the lead in the town's production of Cabaret wasn't just some random storyline and was actually a nod to Stevie's actor, Emily Hampshire. Apparently, growing up, Hampshire was a big fan of the musical and her dream role was to play the character of Sally Bowles. Well, she ended up telling Dan Levy this all the way back in season one and asked if they would do a musical, could it be Cabaret? Dan apparently didn't forget it and that's exactly what he did, even fulfilling Hampshire's dream to play Sally. Aww. 
Another moment that had us crying like a baby. <sighs> Damn it, stop. Was the moment that Patrick sang an acoustic and stripped down version of the Tina Turner song, Simply the Best. Dan Levy apparently insisted the song be in the episode, but it was apparently the actor who plays Patrick, Noah Reed's idea to perform the song in that way and compose the melody himself. The new version certainly was a success and was a heartwarming moment which left many of us in tears. None more so than Catherine O'Hara who could not stop crying throughout the shooting of the scene. I'm not crying, you are! <sighs> apparently though, Dan was very nervous about performing the lip sync of that song as he apparently has a hard time memorizing lyrics and hates dancing and performing in front of people. Maybe uh, being an actor wasn't the best career path then. Then again, maybe a nice refreshing glass of fruit wine would help calm the nerves. Because I have not slept since we've got here and I think my body is shutting down. On to another song now, albeit a little less emotional, is Alexis's hit song A Little Bit Alexis. While the song didn't appear till late on the show, it was apparently a character note by Dan as he was workshopping the characters with Eugene in his father's living room. But it was actually Annie Murphy who co-wrote it with her husband Menno Versteeg, who was the lead singer of the band Colorado, and it sure is a classic. One of the surprisingly sweet moments of music, other than of course a little bit Alexis, is the cabaret duet between mother and son, Moira and David. Originally, the Christmas medley was only supposed to be performed by Moira, but Catherine convinced Dan to perform a duet with her and even sent him voice memos with his harmonies to convince him to join. And it worked a treat. Though, of course, it has nothing on a little bit Alexis. As we mentioned earlier, we all loved and need a little bit of a no no no, a little bit of Ted in our lives. Fans shipped Ted and Alexis from the beginning, and they had an interesting and eventually sweet dynamic within the show. But the issue is that the two are roughly the same height, but with heels on, Murphy is somewhat taller than her co-star. This meant that Dustin would either have to crane to kiss Murphy, or like Tom Cruise, require a box so he could kiss his co-star. Yeah, I bet that isn't embarrassing. Ted, you're not like trying to break up with me, are you? No. The show may be set in Schitt's Creek, and we may see the town and the surrounding areas throughout the show as well as the eccentric people, but one thing we don't see until the final season is the creek itself. In fact, the only reason it is included in the final season is as an easter egg for fans to finally get to see the location where the town gets its name. So I hope it was worth it, viewers. The finale has a ton of easter eggs to moments that happened earlier in the show. During the ceremony, Moira alludes to Bebe Crows, which not only gets her to say the word Bebe again, but is also a reference to the movie she starred in, The Crowening. In his vows, Patrick tells David that he would climb a thousand mountains for him, which is a reference to the way he proposed. Patrick also quotes the Mariah Carey song, Always Be My Baby, which is also a reference to the first time he told David he loved him. <sighs> I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. Also, in the finale, Dan pays homage to his character with the easter egg of his ever-revolving sweater. Like Moira and her wigs, David just can't get enough of that sweater action. David's precious sweaters are there for everyone to see in the background, neatly folded and of course perfectly preserved. The ending may have been a fitting and award-worthy way to end the show, but it apparently didn't take Dan Levy very long to finish it, with him writing the whole episode in little more than half a day. That's because he said that he knew exactly where he wanted the characters to end up, and therefore it was super easy for him to write. Show off. Although, apparently Dan has a very hard time letting go of the show, and nearly had a full-blown meltdown after the camera finished rolling the final episode. Well, then Dan can get writing the spin-off show. What spin-off would you like to see? Personally, I want to see a full feature film version of The Crowning or Alexis's reality TV show. Music has a big part to play in the show, and there are a few little references to the music that made up the show in the series finale. The opening song the Jazzigals sing for the ceremony is the song Precious Love, which is also not so coincidentally the same song that the Rose family dance to when they finally start to accept their lives in Schitt's Creek and embrace the town that is now their home. Also, as David walks down the aisle, the choir sings the best, which is very clearly a reference to Patrick's rendition of the song. We also see and hear a number of easter eggs in the finale, such as the return of Gwen, who finally makes her comeback, David's love of pizza, the framed receipt that Patrick gave to David as a gift, and of course, Ronnie's deep dislike of Patrick due to their prior softball rivalry. Although someone should really tell them that there's no crying in softball. And finally, the word baby, for no other reason than I just can't stop. So what do you make of the show? Will you miss it? Did you know all these facts? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to the channel today for this and more great content.